Rigsters here, back with a, another episode, this time in Isle 2 Stormorphic, based on one of my Discord friends and also one of the commenters that like watching my videos, suggested today to cover a video on the ME262 jet aircraft. In particular, this video is going to cover a very complex engine start procedure that we've discovered is not very well covered in this community or the game itself. So I am on the combat box server and I didn't know this until this also same person mentioned this as well that there is actually a hidden area if you zoom out the map all the way with the mouse wheel jet startup practice and jets aptly named that you can fly the ME262. The best way to do this is to hover your mouse over to here, left click on Jet Startup Practice. Of course, click on the plane and go to Setup. And here in Setup, there's one very important modification we do before we start the Engine Startup Guide. Click on Modification. And here, you can do all sorts of things like have General Gun Sight, Rockets, additional pilot protection, back armor, and all that. The most important one you need is towards the bottom, the fuel regulating valve. What this prevents the engines from doing is catching on fire from sending the main throttle too high. You want to click on that and press OK. And since this is just an engine startup video, you don't have to worry about fuel or anything else. Just hit accept and then click on start. All right, so now we are here. What you need first, under settings, key mapping, plane engine controls, is you need a couple of bindings to start this ridiculously complicated process. Engines ignition. This is a default binding, but you can change this to whatever button you wish. That is the first one you need. The second one, when you scroll down this massive list, <laughs> believe me, it, it is uh, a lengthy process, so you have to bear with me here. Ah, okay. So the next part you need is Engage Engine 1 Start Procedure Stop Engine, which in this case is the default, right control 1. Engine 1 Ignition. This is exclusive to the 262. What you need to do is to bind this key or joystick function that you can press and hold, and you can reach it quickly. If you fail to do so, the engine will not start. You absolutely need this to be on an easy to reach, easy button to press and hold. For one. Scroll down again. You need also for engine startup procedure 2, which is the default right control plus 2, and engine 2 ignition, which in this case is the default right shift plus number pad 2. Just like with anything in this game, you can change this to whatever button or joystick action you want. However, this is very critical you have these two before you proceed. And once you change that, you press accept and close that out. Okay, so now we're on what is going to be probably the most complicated startup sequence in this game. With the number one and two keys, you deselect both by pressing the corresponding keys, like that. And we'll just start with one engine at a time. Most of the time, you want to do the left engine, which is right here. You press number one. And then... What you normally do, like in any other aircraft, is you press E. But before I press E, I want to denote what you need to stare at and monitor at all times. This U slash M. There is two gauges here. One that goes from 2 to 14, and one that goes from 1 to 3. When you're doing the engine starting process, you'll be watching the inside one when you initiate this sequence. The one on the left denotes the engine on the left. The U slash min right here denotes the one on the right. Below these gauges are the Celsius exhaust turbine temperatures in Celsius. If it's between the 3 and 6, 
that's more normal. You do not want this to go beyond the middle bar between 6 and 9, which, no, this is not a in the window. <laughs> but um, that is a gauge you have to monitor as well. So now with engine 1 selected, we press the E key. This will start the engine initiation sequence. And you have to monitor this secto chat a lot. And you want to be on the server that allows this because it's very complicated. Alright, so now it's starting to spool up. As you can see with the U slash M. What we want to do is once it reaches that one dot, as soon as it does that, you want to hold down, in this case the default binding, right shift, number pad 1, that's the engine ignition button. You hold this down. And this is where it gets complicated. While it's quickly spooling up, you have to slowly, once it reaches near the 10 on the big side of the gauge, increase the throttle slowly to 15% and hold that down like so. And then while you're holding it down, you wait for the engine to go between the 2 and the 4 and the U slash M. It should now actually be starting. Now that we did that, we let go of right shift 1 and engine 1 should be stabilized. Okay, perfect. Now that that engine is started up, we do the same process for engine 2. So we deselect engine 1. It will say no engine selected in the engines tab. We press 2. Now we do the same process, but this time for the other engine. And the good news is, if you kept did this correctly, and I'll move the camera a little bit so you can see this better, you'll see if you have the GUI HUD allowed, which is which is on this particular multiplayer server, it will say see engine selected. Since I reduced the throttle to idle, the engine is stabilized. Meaning that if you have the engine on idle throttle, it will keep that RPMs and will keep the engine running. With that in mind, we start the process for engine 2. Press the E key, and it will do engine start. Now, just like before, you do the same exact process on engine 2. But this time, use a slightly different key bind. You wait for it to spool up to 1. Hold down right shift 2 right at the 1, like so. Hold that down, and you keep it held down. Failure to do this will cause the edge of the flame install out. You keep it running, and then once it reaches near or at the 10, you slowly increase the throttle to 15%. Hold that, hold that igniter because you still need it on for a while. You keep waiting and waiting. Wait till it's between the two and the four. Okay, it sounds like engine two is stabilizing, so now I can safely let go of the primer, which is the ignition button. Sorry. Second engine ignition button. Sorry about that, I apologize. It's a lot of complicated process. And then you can reduce it to idle. And if I press F2, you can take a look outside if outside view is enabled, which on combat box it is. And there you have it. That is one of the easier ways of starting up the ME262 with TechnoChat enabled on combat box server. Now it might be much harder if you don't have techno chat enabled or a server that doesn't allow you to use that. Another way to tell if you do not have F2 view allowed is you press F1. The U slash M if the engine is correctly done will show it idling with the engine throttle switched to idle. So now that it is stabilized as you can see over here, this is a another uh, viewer or suggester.
that suggested to me this engine start technique, and I would like to thank this viewer, or, or I think it's subscriber, for doing this technique because it is a very difficult aircraft to start. We had to spend almost about two hours learning this. And as you can see here, he's just flying around doing random things. <laughs> uh oh. Are you okay, Hans? Well, his name's not really Hans, but just saying that. And there he goes, he's flying off into the sunset. <laughs>